any legislative body may decide on the basis of overwhelming evidence of fraud to send electors to the Electoral College who accurately reflect, reflect the president's legitimate victory in their state, which was illegally denied him through fraud. Sounds awfully like the fake electors plot, right? He was calling for this on November 5th, 2020, days after the election, when people had voted, but the race had not yet been called. Meaning Roger Stone, AKA the grown man with a Nixon back tattoo, was pushing this widespread fraud light regardless of the results, which again, weren't even in yet. And it would be still another month before Kenneth Cheeseborough would author the memo that outlined the actual fake elector scheme. Now that we've got two indictments that tell the story in slightly different ways, are the prosecutions even close to being over? Given that the plot to steal the 2020 election is much broader and more national than we ever even thought. I am joined now by Andrew Weissman, former FBI general counsel, former senior member of Robert Mueller's special counsel and an MSNBC legal analyst. And boy, oh boy, Andrew, does it just, the plot just keeps getting thicker and thicker and thicker with more and more characters. But I want to focus on a couple of them with you for just a second. Let's start with Roger Stone. So Roger Stone, we know now from this exclusive uh, piece of video gotten from a documentary that uh, the folks at The Beat got was talking through what sounded like the fake electors plot days after the election. But I want to play, what, play you what he was doing even before the election. This is on November 1st, 2020. Here he is, Roger Stone. I suspect it'll be, I really do suspect it'll still be up in the air. But when that happens, the key thing to do is to claim victory. Possession is nine tenths of the law. No, we won. F you. Sorry, over. We won. Yeah. You're wrong. F you. Andrew, Roger Stone's name does not appear in either of the two indictments, which I have read, and I am enjoying reading them because it is so fascinating. His name ain't in either of them. Does that surprise you? Now it does, um, given <laughs> given what uh, we have, what the thing that you just played and also the evidence that the beat uncovered. Um, obviously, I'm very aware of Roger Stone. He was somebody that we prosecuted in the Mueller investigation. He was convicted, as just to remind everyone, on all counts at a trial by a jury. Twelve citizens found unanimously he was guilty of all charges, and Donald Trump commuted that sentence uh, just days before. And Bill Barr, just to be clear, had a role in that because Bill Barr mm -hmm. wanted to also sort of essentially get rid of the sentence recommendation there and help Donald Trump's friends, of which this was one. And what did Roger Stone do, according to what you just did, is what you just played, is while you're out on bail awaiting sentencing, um, you're engaging in a coup. Um, so yeah. you can understand why the Department of Justice would feel like he has not been sufficiently held to account, because essentially Donald Trump erased his last uh, finding of criminality. So I think he's one of the people who I think we're going to see uh, additional. We're going to see charges. Um, I think that's true of Chesbro. I think it's going to be true at the federal level for a whole variety of people. Uh, I'd be very surprised if we didn't see charges against Chesbro, against Rudy Giuliani, um, a number of people. Um, I do think that the federal government probably wants to wait and see what the trial date is first with respect to Donald Trump. They're keeping their eye on the prize, so to speak. That's where their main focus is and I think should be. But these other players, um, I think that they, like Georgia, are going to hold them to account.